Hey guys, welcome back to Nyx Reads. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please feel free to subscribe if you love watching bookish content and watching reviews, wrap-ups, hauls, that kind of thing, and give this video a like if you enjoyed this format. I'm on a super fun family vacation right now in the Philippines. I haven't been here in years. We're here to visit extended family, see my family's hometown, but we also did a nice week in Palawan, so the beautiful, beautiful islands where also a lot of tourists go which that was so amazing we did a bunch of island hopping tours and we did snorkeling we went kayaking i can highly highly recommend anyways obviously i wanted to take this opportunity to explore some local bookstores and find some new filipino authors here because this is a book channel so this is going to be my summer book haul showing you the stuff that i got here I have to say though that this was harder than I expected. I think the main chain of bookstores is called National Bookstore and I've been to a few of those because we visited a few malls but I found that all of those stores have more stationery and things like that than actual books so I didn't have a lot of books to choose from and also a lot of the times the Filipino authors book section and this is my subjective observation from visiting like three or four bookstores a lot of the Filipino fiction books are mostly romance and some kind of Wattpad story that was then printed out and I was having a hard time finding genre fiction by Filipino authors or even just literary contemporary fiction or non-fiction and I was particularly looking for smaller and smaller circles by F.H. Patagan but I couldn't even order it to the bookstore if you're from the Philippines let me know how you usually buy your books I think people also buy them from Shopee I think the site is called long intro anyways the first four books I did find at a national bookstore so the first one is the one I'm most excited about it's called stories of a bitter country by Ninochka Roska and I just did a very very quick search on the author I just wanted to make sure that she is Filipina and she is actually a very important um, feminist activist who spoke out against Marcos during his dictatorship so I was very excited to pick this book up and I'm just gonna read a part of the blurb on the back of the book because I don't think I can explain this any better so um, th this is a collection of short stories by the way we follow the journeys of protagonists living in various unassuming quarters of the country who face the most peculiar and occasionally grim circumstances. An archaeologist tries to stifle his laughter while readying to shoot himself. An elderly lady sends an invite to her progeny through the sun, the moon, and the postman who rides a bicycle. A girl dies while dancing the boogie. A man reconnects with his former kung fu partner, a white male who has transitioned into a Filipino woman. Stories of a Bitter Country offers an unapologetic scrutiny of the lives of ordinary people, their attempts to find peace amid chaos and justice amid suffering, and in doing so, unveils the best and the worst that can come from all of us. That sounds absolutely amazing. Very excited to read this and to read about Filipino lives that are not shaped by being immigrants in a different country but P Filipinos who actually live in the Philippines. I don't think I've picked up a book like that before. Then I found a YA story. It's Chloe and the Kaishao Boys by Mei Koyuto. So Chloe lives in Manila with her family but she's on the cusp of maybe a life-changing decision as she gets off the waitlist for USC. So she's, I guess, con contemplating to move to the United States for a better future. But before she leaves, her auntie insists on throwing her a huge debut party. So she's going to celebrate her 18th birthday, kind of like um, a Mexican quinceanera. It's a huge, huge party with a lot of different traditions that you do during that feast. It's very typical Filipino. You rent out like a ballroom, you wear a ball gown, things like that. Um, I personally didn't do it, <laughs> but I know a lot of Filipino girls have that. And I guess she falls for one of these boys here and that'll probably be a factor on if she's gonna stay or if she's gonna leave. This sounds really good to me and I'm just very eager to read a story about a girl who lives in Manila. Next I have another short story collection, this time horror. It's called Seek Your Horror and Other Stories by Yvette Tan. Obviously the title is what caught my attention and I see here on the back of the book that it said Yvette Tan is one of the Philippines most celebrated horror writers. 
returns with her second short story collection so that got me if she's a celebrity horror writer from the philippines then i'm interested to read her stories on the back here it says two friends adapt in a zombie infested Angeles city oh i was there yesterday um at luneta park a girl and a young I don't know what that word means. I need to ask my mom. <laughs> Begin their journey to save the last moon. A brothel in Poblacion offers an expecting father pleasures he cannot resist. And in the titular story, an American unwittingly purchases a, a mail order bride from the mystical island of Sikior. Okay. <laughs> very interesting. And I think this is also going to be a very short read. So excited for more horror as we all know this is my year of finding a lot of new horror novel favorites and lastly this is something i am also very very excited about is this children's book <laughs> that i picked up the reason this is a children's book um is because this is completely written in tagalog and the thing is that my parents come from a different region in the Philippines where you speak a completely different dialect and that is the language that I'm more comfortable with because that is the language that we always speak at home and with my relatives. Um, Tagalog I can very well understand because I grew up watching a lot of teleseries um, but if I had to speak it I, I have a lot of troubles but I figured trying to read in Tagalog with a children's story could be a really good start for me. I've never read anything in Tagalog before or in Kapampayan. So this book is called Wala Kayo Sa Paako, which means you're not on my feet. <laughs> um, I think when I read the story I'll understand the context of this title a bit more. And then in brackets it says Sabi ng pinakamatalinong bata sa buong mundo, which means said the smartest boy in the whole wide world world it looks <laughs> very promising and all in tagalog which is one of the like main languages you speak in the philippines because there's a lot of different languages you speak or a lot of different dialects and i have two other books that are not by filipino authors the first one is dean coon's um intensity so I went to a shop that's called Book Sale and it was all used books, but it was pretty much all <laughs> Nora Roberts and John Grisham. They're everywhere. In any country, I guess, you have those books in secondhand bookstores. And this is one of the books I found. It was only 85 pesos, which is, which is just over $2. And this was on my TBR for a long time now. I haven't read anything by Dean Koontz yet. He's known for like adventuresque sci-fi in my head i compare his works to blake crouch's books i think they're kind of the same vibe i think we'll find it out i know that a lot of people rate this five stars so i hope i like it too i wasn't a big, big fan of blake crouch so i'm giving dean Koontz a chance the next book is very special i didn't buy it here my sister got it for me in germany and brought it back here to give it to me it's the spanish love deception by elena armas and the reason this is so special is this author actually had a reading in our hometown in one of our bigger bookstores and my sister went there she said it was so much fun and she kindly kindly got this book for me and the author signed it isn't that amazing <laughs> I'm not even too sure what this is exactly about, but I know that it's super popular. It says, a wedding in Spain, the most infuriating men, three days to convince your family you're actually in love. I mean, I love a wedding setting, so I think I will actually really, really enjoy this. I hope so, because it's a signed edition. <laughs> And lastly, I have a few books here that my super, super kind cousin gave to me as presents because he knows that I love to read. So I didn't get these myself. I think he said he got them at a secondhand bookstore. So I imagine it's something like of the book sale store. Um, so I just wanted to quickly show them and show my appreciation for them because I'm very grateful for these gifts. The first one is a cookbook, which is very fitting. It's the Essential Vegetarian Cookbook, over 75 recipes for quick and easy dishes. This is such a throwback for me because this reminds me so, so much of the cookbooks that my dad used to have in our living room and I would spend so much time when I was bored to just like flip through them. The illustrations and the way the step-by-step -step instructions um, are written, they, this is, this is such a nostalgic feeling to me. It's so, it's so nice. He also got Guiding Young Children in a Diverse Society by Gordon Brown. I am not expecting, and <laughs> I don't have children, 
but I think this is a very very interesting topic and this was written in 1995 I looked it up because I think it's gonna be very very interesting to read through this and see if this can um, if this stood the test of time he also picked out characters destiny by John McCain um, inspiring stories every young person should know and every adult should remember I think he got this because he's um, very much into like business books and self self-help books is this a John McCain who ran for president I'm not sure and lastly he got launch your life by Kenny Silva a guide to growing up for the almost grown up this is a very cool binder because it has different tabs um, it says identity, career, finances, home, and growth. And so you can like basically read up on whatever it is that you're interested in, which I mean, I still haven't hit 30 yet. So I'm still, I honestly still feel like I'm trying to figure out how to be a function, well functioning adult. So I think this is a really, really nice find. I might share this with my little sisters though, because they're really starting out in life. <laughs> that is all the books that I wanted to show you guys. I'm really, really hot right now, actually, because I didn't turn on the AC and it gets so hot and humid here. It's unbelievable. But I thought maybe it's going to be too loud if I turn it on. Let me know what you guys think. Which of these books do you think should I read first? Let me know which ones you think sound the most interesting. Please let me know if you like this video and please feel free to subscribe if you want to see more bookish content. And my next video is going to be back in Canada. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.